Hello humans, welcome back to Game Development Ops and um, now we're going to be talking about how to set up the um, your local Perforce server to be accessible over the internet by your friends, yourself, if you're aware from your workstation or by your colleagues, um, well basically anyone with access, alright? Now uh, so far, if we run the admin here, uh, so far we've got two servers set up, alright? We've got the uh, Google Cloud server running over here and we've got the local server running as well. Now what we need to do is first set up the type map. We've done so far this, we've done this already on the uh, Google Cloud uh, platform, but locally we actually forgot to do it. So what we're going to do here and now, just uh, run the command line and um, type down P4 uh, dash P, the password that we had, and uh, obviously uh, type map. Okay, my bad. Just P4 without the password type map. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all right, all right. Fine, 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 fine. Uh, set P4 port equals to localhost 166. And now run the type map. Yes, thank you. Yeah, well, this is like it happens sometimes when you're uh, when you got connections to two servers. You got to set like which one of these is. Uh, just if you got this probably if this happens just you know run this command and you know open the type map okay we can close this out now and let's go into unreal engine type map <clears throat> open up the same uh, page that we did before uh, open the using performance source control obviously you can do this by following this stuff here it's just I don't think I think they're missing out a couple of things copy all of this stuff here now if you got some other binary fi binary files or some other files that are not here maybe if you want to source control your imports which would be fbx files i don't think i can see an fbx here yeah they don't have any fbx files so you'd, you'd need to add an fbx as a binary plus one for example or a binary plus w i forget which one is needed yeah i think it's binary plus one one of these allowed you to only you know only had a read write the other one had a read the other one only had a write uh so um these are just the constraints <clears throat> Okay, uh, so in the type map, you're going to paste what you just uh, found, like this, and save it. Now, this is your type map done. Um, in other words, uh, this uh, versioning engine will now know which file is a binary, which file is a text, and which file, you know, basically it's the type, it's a type of files, right? This, these are all the files that are going to be in there. If you're going to add more, though, you might have to go into the documentation you know, perforce documentation actually see which, you know, what this whole thing stands for in order to add the right files. All right. Now that this is done, we uh, are going to set this whole thing up so we can run it on, um, you know, on our, uh, someone can connect to it. All right. So you're going to go to your default uh, IP address. Now, different routers have different setups. Some have .1.254, others have you know, this is a very actually weird one to have a .8, .1, like this super weird. Usually it's .0, .1 or .0, .0. Uh, but whatever, and I, it's probably written on your router, and if it's not, you can Google it easily. And even if you don't Google it, it just, you know, you can pretty much, um, you know, shoot blindly and you, you will probably, you know, land on it. All of them start with 192.168 usually, usually. All right, so what you're going to do, you're going to go into your router and you're going to click on the settings, like, Different routers have different UIs, but you know the workflow is generally the same. And you're going to go to your security settings, and first you're going to open your firewall, which now this is a firewall switch. I don't know special applications. Okay, well there's this where there's uh, for some reason it's called special applications. In other words, in others it will be open ports or ports or port forwarding or whatever it might be called. Just as long as there's ports in here, you're good to go. Now what you're going to do, you're going to click add, and you're going to call yours, I don't know, uh, Perforce, for example, in this case, you're going to open it up. Uh, the trigger port would be 1666. The traffic is only TCP, so uh, trigger protocol and open protocol are all the same. And obviously, if you're doing FTP or something fancy, right, you could probably you probably need a UTP there as well, but whatever. So these are your ports, and you can click OK, and now there you go. People can connect to your website, uh, to, sorry, to your, um, you know, to your server. Uh, however, there's one more problem. Uh, if you've got uh, flo fluctuating IP, which is basically a dynamic IP, you're going to run into a problem where you give your friend your IP, and then the moment you restart your computer, 
uh, you know, he can no longer connect to it. You have to give them the IP again. Now you could just, you know, keep them updated or keep all your team updated about the new IP, but that means that they have to reconnect every time, right? They need to open up the connection, the open connection, just keep writing the same crap all the same uh, all the time, which is annoying. So <clears throat> what you can do is you can type in, in, in Google, the Google no IP. Now no IP is basically something that manages a DNS and DNS is a dynamic name something i forgot the name i forgot the whole uh, uh you know what it stands for but there's it's dynamic name allocation something anyway what you want to do here is you want to create your uh free host name uh so you you, know, you say uh my perforce and um i'm not going to do this now but like it's a very straightforward thing okay um so you choose what's your ex extension you can even add more stuff if you want it for some reason this doesn't work but uh, these are the free things. So you, you use ddns.net, for example. Um, now, every time you wanna, my dot, my perforce, every time you wanna um, connect to this, this is basically gonna download a, um, an application, like an executable, which is gonna install, which is gonna install on your computer. It's gonna run in your system tray every time you start your computer, and it's gonna update this server, their servers, these guys' servers will be updated with your IP. So that whenever someone tries to connect to this IP, they will actually, uh, sorry, to this name right here, right? If someone types in, in uh, the URL myperforce.ddns.net, it will actually reroute them to the IP you've, specifi uh, you've specified. And because this software will automatically detect it and feed it back to their system, uh, it will always basically be updated. Essentially, this is going to be static. Your IP will be changing, but this will not be changing right um, and you're basically going to install it it's going to be over here in your tray running um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go back into your uh, settings here um, <clears throat> go into the uh, let me see here security ddns there we go so uh, this is the ddns and you're basically going to add one Obviously, it depends what kind of stuff you've got, uh, what kind of UI you have, but in general, there should be a DNS settings somewhere type deal. So, uh, DNS or no IP, they're all pretty much uh, the same. Uh, you're going to turn it on, you're going to turn your, the name name, which would be, you know, the my perforce DDNS dot what I think it was net. Uh, you're going to write down your username, whichever it was, and your password, whichever it was. You can click OK and it should hook up to your no IP and then every time someone decides to you know to uh, connect to your um, you know to your uh, instance here to your uh, server uh, they wouldn't have any problems because as long as they know this over here as long as they know this host name the main name now this is the only thing that they need basically to connect uh, obviously uh, once you create a couple of users here right you're gonna have to create a user uh, you know uh, well you need to create a group first so uh, you're gonna create a new group you know these are the group of people uh plebs these are all the the plebs that are working for you or actually call them peasants right and um you know you're gonna make the group and then you're gonna add some users uh, uh, in this but basically rummage around the settings here there's nothing fancy about this stuff so you click okay you got a new what? okay maybe i need maybe you, you need the user first after all i i, don't, I forgot how this is done but Okay, we have the Barbarian. Oh, in this case, it's actually me, so uh, I don't know. Um, let's say Pinocchio uh, wants to, you know, work for you. Uh, and you're gonna give him some arbitrary password or, you know, whichever one uh, he wants and one, two, three, four. Uh, he needs an email though, so let's say uh, Geppetto at um, loser dot now. Uh, full name, Pinocchio. Short nose, right? And uh, obviously, you can restrict access to standard operator service, uh, you know, stuff like that. But um, in general, you can just leave it as standard. Uh, you can obviously write down here about job view reviews and all that jazz, but it, just leave it like that. There's Pinocchio done. Now Pinocchio has almost, you know, he has standard, um, um, uh, you know, security clearances, but you can obviously. Uh, add them to a group uh, assuming you had a group yeah we need to make a group so uh, make a new group and call it uh, peasants so there's your peasants you can add a user Pinocchio well 
um, that's not a user, so um, my bad. So Pinocchio. Obviously, you can browse as well and just add the users like this, but you know, I want to be fancy with the keyboard and break your ears. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so we got this running, and you know, these are the subgroups. If you got any, right? Obviously, you don't have any, so no, not to bother with it. And you click OK, and as you can see, Pinocchio now is part of the peasants group. And obviously, you can have different uh, groups and such as you know, they got the number of maximum results, how many. Um, you know how many like how many times you have to update the password you know like basically some overall control uh, of people not you, you don't have to just edit each one uh, of these people and give them different permissions every time you want to do something different all right uh, obviously you can edit this stuff uh, later down the line anyway this is how groups work and now that we've set up the um, type map and uh, obviously now that we've set up the no IP well you've set it up because I didn't do it, but uh, you get the point. I think ex I think I explained it pretty well on how to get it done, uh, how to get it running. Right. One final thing now before we finish this uh, is actually we'll do this in the other in another video. So uh, next video I'll explain to you how workspaces work and uh, you know how the visual client of Perforce and what's exactly the workflow when it comes to Perforce in general. All right, that's it. See you guys next time. Bye.